Yo, what's poppin' guys? Sizzle here, and today we're gonna be taking a look at the 35 Pokes June Pokemon and trying to kind of predict how good the things will be. This is before any bans, this is without any meta discussion, you know, really talking things over with other people. This is just my predictions as to how I think things will be, you know, how I expect things to go, what I expect to be good, what I expect to be bad, and my thoughts on why that would be the case. Um, yeah, I do want to be a little bit transparent though. I've played four or five games of this meta so far with some friends in private, none of which had any previous meta experience. We literally just played four or five games against each other just to kind of try things out. So I do have a minimal amount of experience with how this actually plays out. It's not just fully blind predictions. Uh, I just want to get that out there, but it is mostly blind and I have, I have minimal experience with most of the Pokemon that we're going to be looking at. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be going from Mimikyu in the top left to Krikatoon in the bottom right. There's no guarantees I had timestamps to this video or whatever, so I'm not gonna, uh, yeah, so just, like, if you're looking for a specific Pokemon, kind of look at what I'm talking about and see how close it is. We're gonna be going left to right all the way down. Uh, anyway, we're gonna be starting with... Uh, anyway, we're gonna be starting with Mimikyu, who I personally think is going to be a solid A-tier contender. There's not really <laughs> too, too much to say. There actually is quite a lot to say about this Pokemon. I think if you ignore it, you're going to get severely fucked up. There are definitely answers to this Pokemon, but you actually have to really be cautious of it. The main things it has going for it is one, if you click the little speed thing here, you can see it is what, like the, the seventh fastest thing that's here, eighth fastest thing. It's a very fast Pokemon, right? There are a few things that outspeed it, but it makes up for that in a few different ways, uh, one of which is... 90 attack, right? It's got a very solid attack stat. Uh, it's got a weirdly high amount of special defense. And more importantly, the ghost fairy typing, which gives it immunities to fighting, immunities to uh, normal. And then the fairy typing, which just is a great attacking type, right? Ghost fairy, this is a phenomenal attacking type. And ghost gives it some solid defensive properties as well. Uh, but more importantly, its ability, Disguise, it basically gives it a free substitute on the first turn to do whatever it wants to do. And you can actually combine this with Substitute that you can pass in from Cyclozar right here. So you can have a Substitute and Disguise and two Immunities and just kind of get away with quite a lot. Uh, main things on this Pokemon are definitely, I feel like almost everyone is going to run Sword Stance at bare minimum. Because it takes that pretty solid 90 attack with very good attacking types and makes it what, like, I don't actually remember the math on this type of stuff, but I think it makes it something like 120, 130 attack off of one sword stance, which is ridiculous and means you can one-shot most things. And with 96 speed, if you do, like, a full speed investment, a full, like, attack investment, you know, like, maybe a plus speed nature to help it outspeed a few things, you can really fuck stuff up. Uh, as for items to use with this thing, there's quite a lot of options, but the main two I definitely could see a lot of value in are Life Orb, Leftovers, and maybe if you have some crazy predictions or, or you maybe you want to pivot this thing for some reason. I don't think you really pivot uh, Mimikyu around. I think you just do Leftovers or Life Orb or uh, an Air Balloon to maybe do some crazy third immunity and, and try to really get some absolutely free sword stances up. Um... But for the most part, just Leftovers Life Orb are going to be your best friends, right? Life Orb just lets you do a lot of damage outright. You might not even need a Sword Stance. Leftovers are to uh, heal back the health you lose from the skies and just kind of heal back any damage you might take. It's not like this thing isn't bulky. It's not very bulky with 55 HP. It does have good defense and special defense, but with 55 HP, it's not taking maybe more than one hit. But it can take one hit from quite a few things, and like I mentioned, it has those immunities. Uh, but yeah, it'll just be hitting you some really strong moves. We got like Drain Punch. Uh, we have Facade, Facade, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Leech Life is a decent option. The main one, though, that's going to be spammed is Play Rough. It's Stab. It's Fairy Type. It's amazing. Uh, Shadow Sneak for a nice priority move to hit things if you know you're going to die the next turn or if you just need to outspeed it for whatever reason. Uh, or if you can just kill it with Shadow Sneak, which actually can happen. And then uh, Shadow Claw, which is just another nice stab attacking option. It just has a lot of damage. It has a lot of turns to kind of sit up on you with Disguise and Substitute and Leftovers. And, like, you can just do a lot with this Pokemon. Uh, and overall, it's going to be a very big threat. I, I do think it'll actually be at least B tier, but I'm going to predict that it goes to A tier. Uh, our next Pokemon is Cacturn, 
who is considerably worse. Uh, <laughs> I just cast a Mimic you. The big thing with uh, Cacturn is if you go to this little special attack tab, you can see as the third highest special attack in the entire tier. We go to the attack tab. It's like number four or five. Or I think it's tied for fifth right here. It's got very, very high attack, uh, but that's it, right? The abilities are not great here. There's not really many water types here, and especially not that many that I think will be used. Uh, Sandstorm just isn't going to show up. We don't have a sand set or anything like that. You'd have to set that yourself, and the return investment is not that great. Uh, dark grass typing is pretty bad. A lot of this meta is going to be weak to bug, so there's going to be a lot of U-turn, a lot of, you know, maybe even leech life on Mimikyu, like I just mentioned. A lot of different bug types that will kind of abuse you for your typing, right? Because Mavistiff is weak to it, Cacturn's weak to it, Raticate's weak to it, Weirder's weak to it, uh, Aloe Vera's weak to it, I think Slurber's weak to it. Um, Executor's quad weak as well, right? Delphox, I think, is neutral, and Didi's weak to it. Like, there's just a lot of different Pokemon that are weak to bug types, and there's a good amount of U-turn users that will absolutely abuse you. Uh, Cacturn's Bit, like bad qualities is 55 speed is just nothing 60 defense is nothing 60 special defense is nothing 70 hp is solid but with those defenses it's nothing it just has raw attack and nothing else no good typing no good abilities it's just going to hit you super hard or die before it can and that's why every single character will be running sucker punch it's just a required move for this pokemon because it's your only form of priority it's the only way you can actually hit something with this abysmal speed uh, if for whatever reason you're allowed to get hits off with this thing though, you know, stuff like Drain Punch, uh, you know, what else was there? Drain Punch and like a few other different physical moves. It's got a lot of good physical moves. Drain Punch, Knock Off, you know, Lunge, uh, I guess Power Up Punch. Uh, we got, what was that, uh, Poison Jab. A lot of decent physical moves. Spiky Shield, actually a decent protection option with physical attackers like Mimikyu going around. But it's just going to be too slow to really do a lot, and Sucker Punch isn't really going to get you too much value, and it's going to be very, very predictable. If you see a Cacturn come out, 9 times out of 10 it's clicking Sucker Punch, and you just are going to be ready for that. And uh, because of that, I really don't think this thing will be that great. I think it'll be a very much a gimmick Pokemon, uh, and I'm not expecting it to really get a lot of value. So I'm going to be putting it in the D tier. That's where all the gimmick Pokemon go. They're Pokemon that, yes, you can use, but you're going to have to, like, really work to make them usable, right? F tier is, like, there's no reason to ever use this thing. We haven't found any of those yet, but there will definitely be at least one or two down there by the end of things. Uh, next up, though, we have Mabastiff. I have very minimal experience uh, using and fighting this thing myself, but something I notice right away the second you look at it is this ridiculous 120 attack stat. It is the third highest attack in this year. Uh, and that's pretty good. The other things you notice, uh, Intimidate, great ability, lowers the attack of the opponent by one. That's always nice to be able to use when you're swapping in. Guard Dog, pretty useless. I mean, it makes you immune to Intimidate and gives you plus one attack if uh, you're Intimidated. And you can't get forced to switch out, but nothing's really going to be forcing you to switch out in this meta outside of like a few maybe niche crazy teams. And then uh, you get Stakeout, which means if you swap this thing in on something that doesn't like dark types, like for example, if they're running a Weirder for some reason, uh, or an Indeedy or something, and you swap this thing in and they swap that out, Stakeout will give you double offense that single turn they make the swap. And that off 120 attack, that's ridiculous. I mean, you can just one shot whatever comes in as long as it's not something they're immune to. Uh, items, I mean, you can just choice ban to go even crazier. The speed tier is a little bit unfortunate on this Pokemon, because 85 speed really does not do it any favors. I mean, we can look at the speed tiers uh, just by hitting the speed button here, and you can see that's like, what, number 12? There's a lot of things that would speed this thing. Raichu, Heliolus, Cyclozar, Talonflame, Scyther, Gelfox, Mimikyu, and Didi, Furo. They all have speed. Uh, Mimikyu and Didi, maybe for Scarf, you can probably add speed, but the things way up here, even with a Scarf, I'd don't know if you're going to be outspeeding them. They're notably faster in this thing. Uh, it's not particularly bulky as well. 80 uh, HP, 90 defense. Means you can take some physical hits, maybe. Special defense is not uh, super great, so you're not going to be doing a lot there. The special attack is unusable. Uh, so you're just going to be using this thing as a physical attack group. The raw dark typing, also not super useful. Uh, I do feel like there's going to be a decent amount of fighting and uh, bug type moves, like I just mentioned before. Fighting and bug, I think, are going to be pretty notable in this meta. 
and being weak to both of those is not great for you. And dark typing doesn't really give you any huge advantages here as well. Uh, this thing does not get sucker punch or any priority or anything to kind of outspeed stuff. So you just need to make some really good predictions. If you can make good predictions and good plays, you can just hit like crunch, body slam, you know, facade. You might just want that uh, as protection for getting burned because there's a good amount of physical attackers in this meta. So you want to be kind of uh, careful about stuff like that. You get play rough. I mean, that's just amazing coverage, psychic fangs. But you have like a lot of good attacking moves, a disgustingly high attack stat. Uh, and a lot of options for items, and that can make this thing solid, but I do think it's going to be a little bit too slow and a little bit too bulky to really see any real use, and this is going to be one of those Pokemon where you kind of have to really build around it if you want to see it get great success. It just doesn't have any really unique tools. Uh, its speed tiering is a little bit unfortunate. It doesn't have bulk to make up for that lower speed, and as such, I think I'm just going to have to throw it down in D tier here with Cacturn. Uh, next up, we have Cyclozar, and before I talk about it, I just want to let y'all know, this is definitely the best Pokemon in uh, this month. Like, I, I don't even think it's a real competition. It kind of just does everything, right? So let's take a look over at stats and whatnot so I can explain why I'm saying that and why I believe that to be true. Um, that's pre, like not, at this moment, nothing's banned. Every ability is allowed, every move's allowed. If stuff like that gets changed, that could really change things, but we're not accounting for that in this video. Uh, but yeah, let's look at, let's look at the highest speed, right? Second highest speed in the entire tier. Uh, attack wise, it's got like 10 less attack than the thing above it. It's got solid enough defenses to probably take one or two hits, but it doesn't really have to ever do that. It's got a ridiculous speed stat. It's got a very solid attack stat, even a somewhat respectable special attack stat. Uh, and more importantly, its abilities are amazing. Shed skin, uh, chance to cure status is okay. Power generator is one of the best abilities in Pokemon, and this thing's so fast that it will always be able to proc uh, regenerator with a substitute move, which it has multiple of. Now, the main one of note uh, is Shed Tail right here, where it swaps out and passes a substitute and then heals back most of the health it just lost from that substitute with Regenerator. You basically can swap out and get a free substitute on any Pokemon. And if you combo this with Mimikyu and you think they're going to use a fighting move, which is one of the things Psychwizar is weak to, you can literally Shed Tail into a Mimikyu. Your Mimikyu will now have a substitute. It'll have Disguise up. And then it'll also have its health bar. Basically, it has like three or four different layers of protection just because of cyclists are doing that. This thing also has U-turn with the generator, so it doesn't even have to bother with any of that. It also gets rapid spin. It's one of the only like rapid spin defoggers in this entire meta as well. Uh, all the while having some very solid attacking moves, which off of its attack stat and stab of dragon and normal typing can be devastating. Body Slam doing a very solid, respectable, 100% accurate stab damage with 30% chance of paralysis. We got Crunch for reasons, if you want that. We have like Draco Meteor and Overheat, which if you want to use this thing as a mixed uh, attacker, they're great like single options for that special attack slot, where you can just kind of hit uh, Draco Meteor, hit Overheat to quickly kill something, and then just swap out with Regenerator and heal back uh, with a full powered U-turn because it lowered your special attack and not your normal attack. Right, we got double edge for some crazy damage. We have knock off, which is just another really amazing move. There's a few different terrains in this meta. This thing gets ice burn to get rid of that. Uh, Iron Head is really notable because it's one of the few things Mimic is going to be weak to. So that's amazing coverage. Power Whip can be useful. Quick Attack is just priority, I guess, if you really need that. But this thing's fast enough that you probably won't. It can also just set up Substitute itself. It can boost itself with Shift Gear to just outspeed everything and do a bit more damage. Uh, we got Temper Flare for more coverage. Trailblaze for more speed. Right, you can go with the crazy dragon rush if you want to. We have air release and stuff. Just like a lot of it, just anything you want this thing to do, it can. And it's one of the fastest mods on the tier. And it gets regenerator. And it gets shed tail. And it gets U turn, rapid spin, body slant. Like it just has everything. You could literally run pretty much anything on this thing, and we'll see great success with it. Uh, it's a vital asset to any team. I'd be really shocked if, without any bans or changes to the rules, if this thing wasn't on the winning team for this month's tournament. Uh, but yeah, cyclists are easy S tier. Like it's it's not even close. Next up, we have Eradicate Alola, and uh, I'm just not really gonna say a lot. I just want you to look at this screen right now, and uh, let me know what you think. 
And now I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> this Pokemon is uh, pretty much just unusable. I, I don't think you can, in good faith, use this Pokemon and expect it to do well. Uh, I'll go over why I think that is if it wasn't already obvious to the viewers at home right now. Uh, you can see stat-wise, we have nothing. Right? 70 in like every stat and then 40 in special attack. It's just nothing. It has like no notable stats of any kind. It's not faster than anything. It's not doing more damage in any way. It's not bulkier than anything. Dark normal means it's quad weak to fighting and also just weak to bug, like normally weak to bug and weak to a bunch of other types with the only upside being an immunity to ghosts, which I guess helps with Mimikyu, but there's a few different normal types in this meta. Uh, so that's something you're already going to be aware of on Mimikyu and yeah. <laughs> Uh, the only thing of note, the only thing this thing has that sets it apart is not its abilities. Uh, if you're going to use an ability, I think Hustle is kind of the only one. It gives you, uh, instead of your mediocre 70 attack, it gives you at least something. Like I think it boosts up to like 90 or 100 or something, which is still just lower than the defaults for a lot of the top threats. But at least you can kind of use this thing with that, uh, even though it is slow and not bulky really at all. Uh, and has awful typing. The thing that this thing has, though, that I don't think anything else in this tier has is Pursuit, where if you can swap this thing in, and for some reason they see Raticate Alola and they don't just say, like, wait, I can just kill this with pretty much any Pokemon, you can hit Pursuit, and if they try to swap out, it'll hit them really fucking hard, and they're trying to swap out for a reason, so they'll get hit real, real hard there. I guess you have, like, Counter, and you are somewhat of a... You're not even a mixed attack. You can't even use Dark Pulse, really. You're, you're stuck using a lot of stuff... Uh, that's just countered by Will-O-Wisp, and like I said, lots of physical attackers. So far, we have covered, what, five Pokemon, and literally all five have been physical attackers, unless you count, uh, don't count Tacturn. Um, yeah, this thing gets fucked up by Will-O-Wisp. It has Sucker Punch as well, so Pursuit and Sucker Punch really it's two things, but there's better Sucker Punch users here. Uh, Pursuit, I really don't think is going to be valuable enough to even make this a gimmick Pokemon because Pursuit off of these stats and with the potential to miss because you're kind of required to run Hustle, it's actually just kind of shit. You'd rather just hit whatever comes in super hard with like Mimikyu or Cyclozar or a lot of the other things we'll talk about later. I, I, th I kind of think this thing's stats are just so bad and its typing is so awful that there's just never a reason to use it. It's pretty bad. Uh, next up, we have Weird Year. And uh, it's a very interesting Pokemon. I haven't really used it much myself, and I know very little about it. So a lot of this is kind of going to be first-time looks. I did uh, try to use it once, uh, and right now it's not tiered. I, I'm going to go look at what it's got to offer, talk things over, and then uh, we can discuss. But yeah, a uh, notable thing on Weird Ear is by far definitely its HP stat. I think it's the highest, okay, third highest in the entire tier. Attack and special attack wise, while it isn't the highest, it's like on the page, right? We got like ninth for special attack and like 10th for normal attack. That's good uh, mix attacker potential right there. Defense wise, special defense wise, it's kind of non-existent. And speed wise, it's also definitely non-existent which I think aren't really great qualities. Normal Psychic has that vital weakness to the bug type. Like I said, immune to Mimikyu, but that's really about it. Uh, at least unlike Normal Dark, this doesn't really come with a lot more weaknesses. Like, it is weak to bug, but that's kind of the way the weaknesses end. It's weak to, like, bug and dark or whatever. It's, it's really not too bad. It gets a neutral, uh, like, just neutral thing against fighting, which is okay. And it gets a ghost immunity from the normal type. So the normal typing actually really does complement Psychic somewhat well. But Psychic itself, not a great defense or really great offensive typing either. Uh, but yeah, main thing with this, it's relatively bulky. We got the 100 HP. We got 70 in both defenses. It can probably take a hit or two. Not a lot of hits, but it'll take you know a hit or two depending on what's hitting it. It's not going to outspeed anything, but it will also hit super hard. This thing's kind of middle of the road stats. It, it doesn't do anything insane. Uh, but it does have a nice ability in Intimidate and also Sap Sipper. Depending on what you're struggling with, Sap Sipper can be amazing for you. You can just raise your attack for free against you know, Cacturn or uh, Abovera or like a few other things that might have grass type moves like Grass Nut or whatever. That's a decent ability. Intimidate's probably going to be the better one most of the time. Uh, move wise and. You know, item-wise, there's quite a lot as well. Because it is a mixed attacker, you can avoid getting burned and caring that you got burned. But if you are running Sap Zipper, you kind of have to make it a physical attacker, which is unfortunate, honestly. 
Um, because it does have body slam, stab body slam, which is great. It has earthquake and earth power and extrasensory expanding forest. Like a lot of just solid mix attacker options. It really does have quite a lot going on here. Signal beam, very notable for this meta. It does also get sucker punch. It's strictly a better sucker punch user than either of the other sucker punch users. Uh, because with Cacturn, it just dies unless it clicks Sucker Punch, and Raticate dies unless it clicks Sucker Punch or Pursuit. This thing can take a hit without clicking Sucker Punch, so it actually makes it a, a valuable tool to have. It's a nice mix-up option, because you, it's pretty reasonable to expect this thing to go for a Toxic, a Thunder Wave, you know, Zen Headbutt, Body Slam, Earthquake, Earth Power, uh, you know, Iron Tail, Jump Kick. There's like a million different options, a lot of good coverage here. Uh, it's a very solid looking mix attacker with some pretty decent decent abilities and an okay-ish typing it's just got a lot of variety but i feel like this pokemon is nothing that really makes it strong right nothing about this stands out super hard it's not particularly bulky it's not particularly slow or fast it does have a particularly crazy move set it's typing isn't particularly good it's ability not super super great it's great but not like the best uh overall it's very solid all around, but I feel like there's nothing that really catapults it to being, like, good, if you get what I mean. Like, it's just, like, a solid-ish option for a lot of different things, and it has a lot of potential for a lot of different variety, and that's kind of where its strengths lie. Uh, but overall, I'm going to probably put this thing in C tier. I feel like it's not too, too threatening, uh, and it just can die relatively easily to a lot of the more common threats, despite it not being weak to uh, bug or fighting. There's a lot of other types out there, and being hit neutrally doesn't mean like you're not taking any damage. It just means you're not dying in one hit like a lot of the things toward the bottom will be. Uh, next up, we have Pinchurchin. And Pinchurchin is notable for a few different reasons. Uh, one of them being its speed stat, which is actually the second lowest in the entire tier. Its HP stat, you can see, also a Abysmal might also be the second lowest HP. We accept the look. Second lowest HP as well. Uh, so it's got no defense and no speed. Like, what does this thing do? Right, no HP, no speed. It's got some defenses. It's got a pretty moderately high attack as well. And it is a pure electric type, which is just a great typing overall. It's got one weakness in ground, and that's it. Everything else is, like, neutral. Uh, and that's, that's decent defensively. Uh, it has Lightning Rod, which helps you out uh, against a lot of the electric types in this tier, but well, you're definitely running on this thing 100% of the time without any questions asked. I mean, Lightning Rod could be a goofy little tech for a one-off game, but most of the time, Electric Surge. And uh, Electric Surge just gives you free electric terrain on swap-in, and then you have this lovely little ability, not ability, this little, little move right here called Rising Voltage, which, as you see, is electric type, special attack, with 70 base power, 100% accuracy, 32 PP, which gets double power if the target is in electric terrain. And uh, we got 91 special attack. It's stab. It's now 140 base power, 100% accurate. I mean, this is going to nuke things. It also has some coverage. Not a lot, mind you. It's very, very little. But some. We have, like, Surf and skull which are solid water type moves and honestly electric and water already cover quite a lot of things so you don't really need a lot beyond that but if need be we have a facade facade whatever we could also do pain split if you have something that you can't hit you could just do pain split because you're not really going to have a lot of health left if you get hit uh, and you can just do damage that way uh, I guess there's Body Slam and Hydro Pump, but honestly, I feel like you just hit Scald, Rising Voltage, and more importantly, Sucker Punch. This is another Sucker Punch user, and because it's the second slowest thing, it's like a requirement to have Sucker Punch so that you can do some damage when you know you're going to die. It also hit Thunder Wave, Toxic Spikes, and Normal Spikes. If people try to do something on you, if like a Mimic you tries to hit Sword Stance or something on you uh, with its Disguise Broken for some reason, you can hit Toxic Spikes, you can hit Normal Spikes, and kind of force them to deal with you. You do a lot of damage, right? This thing, uh, like some weather sitters and stuff have the problem that when you send them in and they set up the weather, they're like so weak on their own that you know they're going to swap out, or that if they do hit you, it's going to do like nothing. So you can almost like set up on them. You cannot set up on Pitch Urchin. If, if you try to set up on Pitch Urchin, it'll set up on you. It'll hit you with a fat Sucker Punch. It'll heal you with an even fatter Rising Voltage and just nuke you uh, off the earth. And this thing will almost, I feel like, required to have a, uh, a Focus Sash, which means it won't die in one hit because it's weak as hell. We, we just discussed slow as hell, weak as hell. 
right? It dies in like one hit for most things. It's too slow to hit things first without Sucker Punch, which it can use. But yeah, mainly Rising Voltage and Sucker Punch are going to be its main value. Scald is some nice coverage, and then you can kind of pick what you want that fourth move to be. You could go with more coverage, right? You could go with Toxic Spikes. We could do some normal spikes. But generally, this thing kind of sets up terrain, tries to nuke something with Rising Voltage while staying alive with Focus Sash, and then can have a fun little mind game where they're like, well, is he going to hit Rising Voltage again, or is he going to Sucker Punch me? Because if he Sucker Punch me, he is a mixed attacker. There's a chance it kills, right? You got to be a little bit careful with that. Uh, and, and as such, right, that's that's kind of all it really does, but that's a good thing to do. Electric Terrain has a lot of beneficiaries in this, mainly Raichu Alola, which gets its speed doubled into Electric Terrain, and its Electric Moves powered up, and it gets Rising Voltage. Heliolisk gets Rising Voltage, uh, and I think there's like another Electric type somewhere, but I kind of forgot. But either way, I've quite a few different Electric types here to benefit, quite a few things with Electric Coverage to benefit. It's a solid thing. It's a solid thing to be able to set up uh, Terrain and then kind of die, do nothing. I also forgot to put Weird Ear anywhere, which I just remembered now. Uh, wait, no, I, I put Weird Ear somewhere, and there's now just two Weird Ear, which is crazy. But yeah, Weird Ear, C tier, Pinch Urchin, I think a solid B tier. I think it'll be a solid threat, something you have to at least, uh, at least be considering every time you make a team. A tier, S tier, like, you need to have answers to these things or you will lose. B tiers, like, this will probably show up, but it's not too hard to deal with. C tier is like, this can show up. And it's also not super problematic. D tier is like, this is a gimmick. You will you should know the gimmick. Uh, and they will probably build teams around the gimmick. So you got to be a little bit careful. F tier, I, I'd be shocked if they got any value. Right, that, they're just re-explaining things. Uh, anyway, that's the entire first row. Off to the second one. We got Slowbro Galar. Slowbro is notable for its slow speed as well. Right, It's right here. It's like number five slowest. It's also notable for a few different reasons. It's like number five in most stats, right? Number five in HP. Number like, what, 11 or 12 in attack, which is fine because there are a lot of high attackers here, right? Number uh, like 10 in defense. Number like 11 in special attack. Number, what, what are we in special defense? Oh, he's down there. There's a lot of high special defense guns here, I guess. That's kind of insane. But overall, there's some very respectable stats all around other than its low speed. But because he actually has a lot of bulk to his name, that's okay. We got good bulk here. 95 HP, 95 defense, 70 special defense, solid bulk. Especially, it's not super solid. But with the poison psychic typing, most of your weaknesses like ground, uh, bug, and dark are all generally physical. So being very, very physically bulky and also getting the lovely ability known as Regenerator to heal back any damage you might take while having good mixed attacker stats. 100 attack, 100 special attack means you can use damn near anything. I will say, I feel like mostly use this thing specially. Uh, it's got, first off, it's like Signature Move, Shell Sidearm, 20% chance of poison. It uh, hits physically or especially depending on which one would do more damage, which is just great. Uh, 90 base power, 100% accurate. Like, that's a must on this Pokemon. Beyond that, though, you have quite a lot of different options, mainly because it's based off of Slowbro. Right, you get Slack Off, you get Surf, you get Scold, you get Thunder Wave, Toxic, Yawn is a possible option. Uh, Zen Headbutt, because you are a mixed attacker, a very solid option. Poison Gem, Power Gem, somewhat usable. Right, we get Ice Beam, if you need that for some reason. Gunk Shot, Grass Nut. Right, Focus Miss, Flamethrower, Facade, Facade, whatever you call it. Yet again, Earthquake's a really big one. Drain Punch is probably maybe usable. Uh, just good, decent coverage. Good, decent, bulky stats. It is slow, but it also gets Regenerator and can tank hits and to kind of heal them back for free for you. Get Substitute and stuff. It can try to set up on things. But generally, this is just very tanky, hard-hitting Mon. Uh, you just can kind of get a lot done with. Its type is somewhat weak, but like the stats it has here really make up for that somewhat weak typing. And uh, Poison Psychic is okay-ish from an attacking side. It really defensively is not great. I'll, I'll keep it 100. There's a lot of notable weaknesses on this guy, but none of them are like quad weaknesses. They're all solo weaknesses and things it can probably deal with on its own. And it's uh, it's bulky enough and hits hard enough and has regenerated. As is a solid B tier threat. I think it, it has some real stats to it that kind of matter. A good amount.
Uh, and now we have the demon known as uh, I always call this thing like like aloe vera. Not sure where I get that name from, but we have our Uh And yeah, it's it's certainly a Pokemon that they've put in this tier, and it's quite threatening one at that. Right, we go to the special attack category, and who do we see at number one? But our Believer. This thing is disgusting. All right, like very minimal speed, but notably faster than Slowbro Galar and Pinchurchin, which is good to be faster than because they're decent threats. Faster than those two while having disgusting levels of bulk, 78 HP, 90 defense, 109 special defense, extremely bulky, grass normal, actually a shockingly good defensive type for this meta. The only real weakness you have to kind of be aware of on Arbeliva this time around is your fighting weakness. There's not really any fire or flying users. There's like one or two, but they're pretty easily avoidable. And depending on how you're set up, you don't even have to think about them at all. Uh, like I said, you have this ludicrous 125 special attack. And uh, more importantly, not the ability Seed Sower. You'd think it's a pretty good one. It sets Grassy Terrain, and that is good. But the best ability it has is definitely Harvest, which uh, every turn after you, you use an item, uh, so every time after you ate a berry, it says if the item is last used a berry. And this is notable. This wording is very important because it means if you get hit with knockoff before the berry uh, is used, you actually never get it back. But if you can use the berry without getting knocked off one time, every single turn that you don't have a berry, it literally coin flips to see if you get it back. So you can just run a citrus berry with harvest. And every turn, there's a 50% chance you just heal for half your health. You can combine this with stupid stuff like leech sheed. You can hit him with the giga drain. You can hit him with a nice alerting voice for solid coverage there. You got hyper voice for even more coverage. You have annoying things like substitute. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It doesn't have a lot of moves. That's its main weakness. But it's like really bulky. Uh, very solid defensive typing wise. Like there's, there's literally the only thing you have to worry about in the entire 35 pokes meta here. Pretty much just the fighting type is your only weakness. Everything else is neutral or like you resist actually. You resist ghost, you resist electric, which is really big. I think you even resist ground, which is just insane. Uh, and then you hit him back with a really fat Giga Drain, you know, Leaf Storm, uh, Earth Power, Alluring Voice. Like you have some coverage, not a lot of coverage, mind you. There is like four moves here. It's just like the four up here. We get Giga Drain. Earth Power, Alluring Voice, and uh, Hyper Voice. Those are your four moves total. You don't have anything else to hit things with. But those four moves alone give you almost all the coverage you need. And then you always do have Substitute, Strength Sap, and Leech Sheed to be even more annoying. This thing's basically just going to be super unkillable unless you have something prepared for it. It has a ludicrously good defenses and an amazing typing and Harvest. And Harvest, because why not? And it is faster than the slow Pokemon, and more importantly, Slowbro Galar, which is one of his best answers because of that poison typing. It's like the only poison type really here that can hit this thing pretty hard. Uh, and you're faster than it, so you can always just hit Substitute first, and Substitute will maybe use up your Citrus Berry, but like you can just stall things out, be really, really obnoxious, and hit pretty hard. 125 Special, like I mentioned, which is crazy, and it's, it's off of Stab as well. Uh, with Hyper Voice and Giga Drain both being stabbed. This thing's going to be nuts. Uh, I'm not sure if it's S tier nuts. I, I, like, because Cyclozar does everything. This does one thing. Arbeliva, Ar 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 Aloe Vera, whatever you want to call it. It's just a fat, tanky wall that hits back shockingly hard and is really, really hard to kill. But it's not as like versatile and uh, meta defining as Cyclozar. Like, Ar Arbeliva, you're going to have an answer to this thing. You need an answer to this thing. It's an A tier, right? Anything in A tier, you need an answer to. Your team should be able to handle them, or you're probably going to lose quite a lot of games. But if you can cook up answers to this thing, it actually does get answered by a few different things that we maybe will cover later. Uh, but I could see the argument for making it S tier because I think. Uh, unless I'm forgetting something here, it is like hands down the most tanky, regenerating, annoying thing in this entire meta. Uh, it's it's going to be real obnoxious. But luckily, we have a lot of high uh, damage dealers to maybe help mitigate that. Anyway, uh, next up, we have Heliolisk. And uh, Heliolisk, pretty standard one of the mill mon. Uh, it's got a very solid, respectable 109 I Click the right category, right? yeah. 109 special attack and 109 speed, making it the fifth highest uh, special attacker and the fourth fastest Pokemon. 
Uh, and that's literally all it has to its name, right? You can see its other stats are pretty much non-existent. It's got special defense high enough and an HP set high enough that it can take a special attack of some kind, probably. So, like, you know, anything that isn't Earth Power, it can probably live one of. But uh, defensively, physically, defensively, and attack-wise, it's non-existent. Uh, electric normal is just kind of strictly worse than just raw electric. I mean, you do get an immunity to ghosts, but you get that same weakness to fighting. And hopefully you guys are kind of piecing together why I'm saying fighting type is going to be super strong this meta. Right, fighting types will hit Albavera, Cyclozar, this thing. Uh, they hit most other things neutrally, generally. All the stuff in like DNF, they get hit super hard by it. And if we kind of look at everything else, fighting hits most of these things pretty hard. Uh, it's, I'd say if your Pokemon that you're trying to use has a fighting type thing, try to use it. Uh, Ability-wise, Heliolisk has three different abilities that all are changed uh, depending on the weather. Uh, which is just kind of useless. I don't really think there's going to be any weather setters this meta, outside of some very weird teams. But yeah, this thing is probably going to be forced to run a Choice Scarf. It's in the perfect tier, uh, speed tier to kind of need one. I mean, you could go crazy with it and go for Choice Specs, but this thing is just going to be a fast, hard-hitting uh, electric type in things where Pinchurchin sets up a lot of electric terrains. Right, you could just do things like, you know, just hit a raw Thunderbolt, I think this thing got Rising Voltage, but I guess not. But Thunderbolt still gets powered up. You get Volt Switch. You do have U-Turn, which is notable and is a possible thing you'll have to use because of Trap Inch, which will trap you if you only have electric moves and kill you. So U-Turn is a kind of required tech for that. You want to be very aware of that. If you think someone might use Trap Inch, you want to run U-Turn instead of Volt Switch or alongside it. Because honestly, 90% of what you're going to be doing is hitting Thunderbolt or Surf, depending on the situation. Maybe a Signal Beam here or there. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I mean, you do have Hyper Voice as well, which is Stab. But with Mimikyu going around, you don't want to be stuck with a Choice Scarf or Specs hitting Hyper Voice. Yeah, this thing's just decently fast. Fast enough where if it's Choice Scarf, it'll be probably the fastest thing out there. And it hits super hard with a high special attack, a uh, the Electric Typing being Stab. And Thunder Wave and Volt Switch. It's just going to hit hard and be kind of fast and do nothing else. Uh, because what else is it supposed to do? That's that's all it does. And honestly, that's good enough with, with Electric Terrain going around and all that. That's a decent threat. It's it's a very solid mod. I could see working on a good amount of teams. It's not something you have to be super aware of. Because if you just get something that lives in Electric Attack, which as you'll see later, you'll just want in general... Uh, then it really won't be that much of a problem. You can just send that thing in and like one shot it with most things, even just uninvested. Uh, anyway, next up we have Trap Inch, which we did just mention uh, in our last thing, and we're also going to mention for a few other reasons. We go to our stat thing here and go to the speed stat, search by lowest. Trap Inch is our lowest speed. Trap Inch is also our lowest special defense. Trap Inch is also our fourth lowest special attack. Kind of interesting. Trap Inch is also uh, our lowest defense. Trap Inch also is our lowest HP. Attack-wise, it's not our lowest, but you'll notice uh, four out of six stats, it's the lowest in the entire tier. So what makes this thing usable? Why is it even here? Uh, 100 attack, first off, solid amount. That's a solid amount of attack to have. You can boost even further. There's not really any other stats worth boosting, so you might as well do speed. And that's really it. You're just going to use your raw physical attack. And uh, more importantly, your ability. Not Hyper Cutter, not Sheer Force. You're stuck using Arena Trap. Uh, this thing doesn't let things swap out. So if you can come in on something locked into an electric type move, which your ground typing will make you immune to, you can do whatever you want until you decide to kill it. And you can just decide to kill it with Earthquake. Um, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much it. You have quick attack uh, for when you inevitably fight something that isn't only running electric types. Uh, you, you also need to run a focus dash on this thing. If, if anything isn't a raw electric type, you are not taking a hit without focus sash. You have no defense. Literally zero. It, like These numbers are all zero as far as I'm concerned. Zero speed, zero defense, 100 attack. That's your whole thing, and you get arena trap. Right, so you hit Earthquake, you have First Impression, you have Quick Attack, uh, these are all required moves. Beyond that, it's kind of up to you to what you want to use, um, but these three are a must. 
first impression if you have the opportunity to send this thing in and hit first and for whatever reason you know you might get hit twice and focus sash might not save you it's super useful to have this priority move and also bug typing being very solid is definitely nice quick attack even though it's weak as hell it's like you're on the other priority and you can use it always first impression you can only use on the first turn quick attack you can use always despite being somewhat weak you have a solid enough attack so that you can hit decently on your way out Earthquake, it's stab, it's high damage, it's actually gonna hit really hard off this thing. And then I'd probably finish it out with like Toxic or uh, Stealth Rock, because you don't really have any other options that you care to use. I'd probably just go Stealth Rock. Uh, what you pretty much do with Trap Inch every single time, find something like Heliolisk or maybe one of the other electric types that we'll talk about later that's stuck on an electric type move, swap in, set up a Stealth Rock, maybe, you know, if you want to be crazy with it, you could also set up a substitute or something, but generally just set up a stealth rock, kill it with an earthquake. When the next thing comes in, uh, hit it with another earthquake and then go to quick attack because you have a focus sash. Unless you think that the focus sash won't work, then just quick attack right away. Get some more damage on the way out. But this thing basically is built specifically to counter electric types. And uh, other than that, it maybe takes a hit with focus sash and hits with decent damage for earthquake, but there's a decent amount of ground resistance going around and nothing super weak to it other than those electric types. And as such, Trap Inch is a very, very, very clearly uh, just a gimmick mon. I say just like that's a bad thing, but it's a solid gimmick mon. It's It's got a good gimmick, a usable gimmick. And if you notice someone abusing a lot of electric types, you just want to you know, bring it out and uh, win. But speaking of ground types, we have definitively our best ground type of this team with a monstrous 145 defense, 105 special defense, uh, and, and I guess 58 HP, we got Rune Regus. This thing is nasty tanky. It doesn't have a super great ability, but every now and then this can be neat. You can get stuff like Flame Body and Regenerator uh, that will go away when the turn ends, by the way. Like, with the way this is described, you'd think the abilities get swapped forever. But uh, no, the abilities only get swapped while the Pokemon are actively out there, which doesn't really help you too much, but it can help you if you're swapping in and out. You almost always are going to be giving this thing Leftovers, uh, you almost always are going to be giving this thing Earthquake, and you almost always, like 99.999% of the time, want to give this thing... What is the other move? I know what I'm looking for. Body Press. Earthquake and Body Press are a must on this thing. I don't think you can go without them. We've talked extensively about how fighting types are really, really good in this. And if we look at this thing's stats, 145 defense is what Body Press goes off of. And it's fighting type, and it hits a lot of things very well. Must have move. Uh, you cannot go without this. Other than that, uh, Earthquake, because it's stab, very good. Uh, notable thing with Rune Regus is three immunities, and very good ones to have for this meta, mind you. You have the immunity to fighting and normal off of Ghost, which is great. Like, it can spam body press, and uh, it can't take body presses, which is great. That's a great feature to have. Immunity and normal, not as important, but a lot of things in this meta are normal types, like uh, Arbeliva, Cyclozar, and Heliolisk, and they might use stuff like Hyper Voice or Body Slam or stuff like that, weird as well. They might use some normal stab, and you'll be immune to that. Uh, more importantly, ground typing, giving you immunity to electric, so things like Heliolisk, uh, Lowland Raichu, and the like. You're just immune to it. You don't have to care about them at all. Uh, very simple stuff. Zero care in the world. Three immunities is insane. And not really that many weaknesses. I mean, you're weak to what? Like water, uh, ground. It's not water and ground. Water, grass, and ghosts, I think, are the main ones that come to mind. And dark, I guess. But most of the dark types in this meta seem to be kind of shit. So your main things are going to be water and grass. And there's not too much of that going around as well. You get three immunities to types that are going to be flying around a lot. Uh, not too many weaknesses in the matter. And very good bulk. I mean, 50 HP isn't great, but with this ludicrously high defense and special defense, it actually makes up for it. Very decent attack. Speed tier is okay-ish. You are the same speed as Slowbro Galar. It might be worth putting in like 8 speed or something. Just to outspeed Slowbro Galar and hit it with an Earthquake or Body Press. You know, free damage right there. Uh, beyond that, it doesn't really have super reliable recovery or anything. It doesn't have like recover or slack off or anything. It does get Stealth Rock, which is a pretty useful move. It gets Substitute. We also do have other coverage moves like Zen Headbutt, uh, Stone Edge. You're not going to use Rock Slide because you're never going to be faster than anything. Shadow Claw is nice, mainly for hitting Mimikyu and also other Rune Regus. Poltergeist is a good one as well. Uh, Facade, Facade, whatever you want to call it. 
Yeah, it's great if you get burned, because this thing is always a physical attacker. Even body press actually gets halved, uh, because it's a physical attack. But yeah, Earthquake Body Press are a must on this thing. It's super bulky, has a great typing with three immunities. Uh, and it's going to be kind of hard to take out, and, and a very solid Pokemon. I, I do think this thing's extremely usable. It's going to be kind of obnoxious. It's got a decent amount of options. Not the craziest moveset we've seen so far, but definitely a very solid one. And the triple immunity is pretty big for it. I think it's a solid A tier Mon. Uh, next up, we have Gabbite. Uh, there's actually really nothing to say about this Pokemon. You can look at its stats and see nothing, right? Uh, no defense, 65 defense, 55 special defense, 60 HP. It's nothing. What you do is you give it Eviolite because it's not fully evolved, and then it makes that 1.5x, but that still actually means you only get, like, what, 90 defense, 90 special defense, 60 HP, which isn't super great. Uh, Dragon Ground, I guess, gives you that electric immunity, but it makes you weak to Cyclozar and possible Cyclozar coverage moves. Makes you weak to Mimikyu, which has Fairy-type moves. Arbovila has a Learning Voice. Uh, and you're not, like, immune to anything, right? Rune Regis can still hit you with a Fat Body Press. Uh, the only real immunity of note is that electric type immunity, which there could be a few electric types, but I think to deal with that, you're much better off just using Rune Regus for most things. Rune Regus even has like a higher attack. Like this thing does have a higher speed, but this is a speed tier you don't want to be in. It's like the 15th fastest thing or whatever. Kind of not fast enough to do anything. Uh, Sandville, like I said, there's not going to be a Sandstorm, so you don't care about that. You hit the rough skin, which means if you get hit with a physical move, they lose an eighth of their health, but that's not super useful when you can't do anything in return. You have no special attack to speak of and decent physical attack, which means you're not using Draco Meteor, you're not using Dragon Pulse, you're not using Earth Power. You're stuck using the physical stuff, Earth Power for, say, uh, I guess Dragon Tail, Dragon Claw, you know, Double Edge or whatever. It's just not great for you. You got a lot of, like, decent coverage and all that, but, uh, just no stats to back it up, no ability to really help back it up either. This thing is kind of pointless to use. It doesn't have a super great typing or stats or ability, and Eviolite doesn't even make up for that, which is kind of insane to say, because Eviolite can be so busted for a lot of not fully evolved stuff. But yeah, uh, another solid F tier. Illumis, uh actually a solid Pokemon. And you wouldn't think of it, right? If you look at the stats here, you just see bug type notoriously bad typing but since there's no real fire types or flying types in this meta actually really not that bad defensively shockingly it's not completely awful not even too many rock types either like this thing actually kind of goes untouched type wise stat wise uh non-existent really it's got okay defenses 75 defense 85 special and 65 hp makes it somewhat bulky especially because it has effectively no weaknesses because there's not many things that hit bugs super effectively here but what makes this thing good is not a Oblivious, it's not Tinted Lens. This is guaranteed to be running Prankster, which makes uh, its status moves have a priority raised by one, And but it can't hit Dark Types with status as a downside. But as we can see on the right here, I think all the Dark Types are pretty shit, at least the ones we looked at so far, and I don't think there's even any left. So yeah, the Dark Types all kind of suck. So uh, Prankster is just going to make you move first every single time. And you have a lot of moves to use that with, right? You get yourself Thunder Wave, you get yourself like a Toxic... We have a Roost, which will heal you back half of your health, uh, which is that's pretty neat. We got Bug Buzz, uh, which is notable. I believe this goes through Substitutes and Disguise, which is pretty notable with the amount of Substitutes and Disguises Mimikyu and Cyclozar are going to have up, and Ar Arbolivo as well. Uh, you're going to see a lot of Substitutes with Cyclozar around, so I'm going to say. <laughs> we have U-Turn, which is Stab on this thing. I mean, it has no attack stat, so it's not going to do anything crazy, but it is stab. It's worth noting, and it's a nice pivot move. Uh, we get, yeah, that's pretty much like the main things. It's got some decent coverage here and there, but you're mainly using this thing for prankster and just kind of paralyzing things with thunder wave and then you turning away and maybe hitting roost to just be annoying. Or maybe you hit a toxic instead of thunder wave and just slowly kill things off while spamming roost. I don't really know what you're going to be doing, but this thing's got some good options uh, for dealing with most of that stuff. So yeah, uh, this is just your Prankstermon of the month. I don't think there even is another Prankstermon option. So that the ability to go first with any status move is just pretty strong. It doesn't have access to every status move, so I can't place it too, too high. But it's not exactly a gimmick mon either. Uh, Prankster is a super, super valuable ability, especially with no dark types around and no other Prankster users around. I'm going to put this thing in C tier because Prankster on its own is super strong. I could see this thing on a winning team. I mean, it's... I don't think it's going to be on every team, but I could see Illumis being the reason that uh, a team goes very far. 
Uh, then we have Probopass, who is the opposite of that, which might be kind of shocking to some of you. Because right, if we look up Probopass real quick, you'll notice some ludicrously high defenses. Right, we said uh, Rin Regus had some good defenses, but this thing's got 145 defense and 150 special defense. That's really fucking high. Uh, it doesn't have great HP, but with those defenses, it's very defensively strong. It even gets sturdy, so if it wasn't defensively strong, that's kind of neat. Uh, sand Force is kind of pointless for it, because like I said, there's not going to be any sand. Magnet Pull, there's not any other steel type, so you're using sturdy every single time. There's no reason not to if you are going to use this thing. It also gets Body Press, which means it can take that 145 defense and turn it into an attack. Uh, and that's where it ends. That's, that's everything about it, right? That's all it's got. Uh, other than that, it has not really any attack or a special attack. But more special attack than attack, so you want to use, I don't know, I guess Discharge and, like, Earth Power. And, like, a few other special moves you get. The problem with this thing, though, isn't any of that. Uh, it's, it's its typing. Rock Steel. Quad weak to ground. Quad weak to fighting. I mean... Look, that's, that's a death sentence, especially in this meta. It's a death sentence normally. Fighting and ground are very common typings. But especially in this meta, I've talked to death how good fighting types are going to be and fighting type moves. And you're telling me this thing's quad weak to it. It's dead. It's super dead. And it's slow as hell. And it doesn't really hit super hard in return to make up for it outside of its own fighting type move. Which if it's Rune Regus, it's immune to. Uh, like, it's it's just dead. It's super slow. It's somewhat bulky, but its typing makes it actually weak. It's not even bulky. And then it has no attack to make up for it or ability to make up for it. So yeah, this thing just dies because of its typing. And uh, that's kind of the end of the discussion. I guess it has Toxic and Thunder Wave if you somehow get it to live for a turn. But it's just not going to be doing that. Uh, Probo Pass is just kind of ass. That's all there is to say about it. I actually do think it might be an F tier mod, despite its ludicrously high defenses. It just its typing betrays that, and it has nothing else. That's it. Uh, next up, we have Bayonet. I actually don't remember what this thing does. I just remember it being kind of mediocre. But in 35 pokes, that can change. That can really be you can be surprised how good some of this stuff is. Yeah, uh, this thing very interesting stat distribution. It's very clearly it's the same as like uh, Mavistiff. Right, we got like a ludicrously high attack and then nothing else anywhere else. Most of its other stats are actually in its special attack, which is kind of problematic. It's actually looking closer to that Cacturn, where it's just kind of slow and hits hard, but isn't bulky, which is just not great. Generally not great. Frisk is useless. Cursed Body can be somewhat nice. It can kind of disable a move for free. Insomnia is going to be kind of pointless. There's nothing setting you asleep here. Uh, the real question for this thing is what moves does it have to make up for anything? And uh, the answer is kind of nothing. I mean, I guess you get Poltergeist, but there's other things that get Poltergeist like Rune Regus and, and maybe Mimikyu or something like that. Uh, I guess it gets Shadow Sneak, but so does Mimikyu. <laughs> it does get Shadow Sneak and Sucker Punch, which I guess is a combo. And it does have Ghost, so it's immune to fighting and normal, which I guess is a combo. And it gets Toxic and Thunder Wave, but it's not super bulky and not really going to do much beyond that. You're just going to be hitting like Sucker Punch and Shadow Sneak most turns just to be able to outspeed things because of your lower speed tier. Uh, and not hit them super hard. Like this this thing has a lower special attack than Cacturn while having the same attack, while having worse defenses I think than Cacturn actually. I mean it does have Ghost Typing which is strictly better than what Cacturn has, but that's it. It, it doesn't get like... Sorry if there was an abrupt cut there. I kind of lost power for a little bit. Uh, but like I was saying, this thing has Shadow Sneak and Sucker Punch and Pursuit. It does have Pursuit. It's just like strictly better than Raticate. Or having all three of those. It's got it's got two different priority moves and Pursuit to hit something on the way out. And 115 attack to actually do so. So yeah, Pursuit, Shadow Sneak, Sucker Punch. Main moves this thing uses. It has Body Slam, Double Edge, Foul Play... Facade, Gunk Shot, things like that. It's got some okayish coverage, but it's got like no defenses and no speed. Uh, it's got its three gimmick moves, and it's going to be sticking to them. And uh, that's that's kind of everything. So you just, yeah, it's it's a gimmick mon for sure, but it's a bit of a stronger gimmick mon than the other ones. I'm going to be putting this thing in D tier because it still is, I think, quite clearly a gimmick mon. And once you're aware of the gimmick. It's still somewhat easy to play around and kind of weak and can die to most things. Uh, but it's, I do think in D tier, it's definitely the strongest thing in D tier. But it's still it's just very clearly a gimmick mon. 
Uh, then we have Executor. And Executor is uh, pretty notable for having a decent special attack. It's got the second highest. Actually, it has the highest. It's tied with Arbeliva for the highest. It also does have Harvest. Like, we're not going to see a Sunny Day, so it also has Harvest and we'll be using Harvest. Uh, the problem with that is it has the Grass Psychic typing. Instead of Grass Normal, Grass Psychic gives you a lot of weaknesses. Most importantly, a quad weakness to bug, which normally doesn't matter. There's normally not that much bug going around, but like I mentioned, I actually do think bug types uh, moves are just good here. I mean, you, you still give it a Citrus Berry with Harvest anyway, because that's what you do with things like this. You still use that high special attack to do high damage. Uh, and it's still got okay-ish bulk, but it actually even has lower bulk than Arbeliva. It gets like 20 more speed, but it loses out on that 20 bulk. So it's got 85 defense, 70 special defense, uh, 95 HP, which is bulky-ish, I guess. Uh, and then it has a like really high special attack, which you have even kind of the same coverage as Arbeliva as well. I mean, you get a, like extra sensory and expanding force and energy ball, and that's kind of weird and i mean i guess giga drain as well and uh leaf storm but the problem with this thing is kind of almost similar to the problems we were having earlier with uh probo pass it's just that weak defensive typing it it really doesn't do it any wonders it's it's not going to be doing anything for it and uh as such that's all it really is to say it's just a weaker harvest user uh than arbeliva and uh, notably weaker. Like, that typing makes it notably weaker. I still think I want to put this thing in C tier because it does still hit like a truck and have a few moves to do so. And it's like just notably better than everything in D tier. But it, I, I do think it's a lower end C tier uh, thing. I'd be shocked if we see this thing getting considerable use other than maybe one or two Sun teams built specifically for this thing with chlorophyll and even then even with chlorophyll it gets outsped by cyclozar without anything any investment of any kind really like it just gets outsped by cyclozar and a few other things that it's actually weak to it's it's weak to other things that will outspeed it with chlorophyll makes it really hard to use uh anyway now we have registeel and uh registeel notable for being the only other steel type i did say there was no steel types with probo pass other than probo pass but yeah this is the other steel type there's only two of them unlike probo pass though this thing's a lot more usable it has the highest defenses out of anything in this entire uh meta for this month 150 defense 150 special defense and 80 hp is good it's really really good uh, the problem with this thing is, first off, 50 speed, not super fast. And second off, 75 attack, 75 special attack. Those are pretty low. It's it's not a very high number. It's decent enough that you'll do some damage, but not a lot. But this thing gets body press. Really notable. We get 150 defense to use body press with. That's insane. What a great move for this thing to have. We got explosion. Or not explosion. We got a, but we do have explosion. But I don't think you're going to be using that. We have an earthquake to go hit the many uh, electric types flying around this meta. Um, and then heavy slam here. More power the heavier the user is than the target. Registeel is really heavy. A lot of things here are relatively light. Heavy slam can be a solid option as well. Uh, and that's mainly going to be it, and the rest of it's going to be using, like, rest with your high defenses to kind of live for a long time and just be super, super obnoxious. I mean, you have Iron Head, I guess, to do some nice stab damage, but I do think Body Press is going to be your main attacking move when possible. And uh, everything else you want to do is maybe Stealth Rock, right? Hit a Rest, hit a Toxic. You could even just Toxic Small and hit Rest and then set up Stealth Rock in between that while having, like, Body Press as an extra attacking move or whatever. Uh, and that's that's most of what you do. I, you could also use like flash cannon or something, but I do think things that don't directly rely on attacking stats, right? So like body press and heavy slam are notable because neither of these really rely on your attack stat. Like heavy slam is reliant on your weight, which is a stat not on here, right? Body press relies on your defense, which isn't attack or special attack. That's why they're kind of great moves for this thing to use. You also try setting up with curse, I suppose, but I think generally nine times out of ten. You're hitting Toxic, and then you're hitting Rest, and just kind of rolling and repeat. Uh, you could also do Steel Roller. It's great, because there's actually going to be a good amount of terrain, and that's like a very high base power. So even though it's 75 attack, 
Uh, 130 base power plus stab is actually going to do a lot of damage, and it gets rid of terrain for you. And I think this is the only thing. Sorry, this is like one of two things other than Cyclosar, uh, which can get rid of terrains for you, which is a pretty notable thing. And just the steel typing is great overall. I mean, I did say there's a lot of fighting types going around, but you can tank them. You got you got ludicrously high defenses. You can tank those fighting types, hit them back with a body press. Uh, unless you're getting body press, which is kind of the problem. And uh, I, I don't exactly know the solution to that. I guess it would be counter. If hit by a physical attack, return double the damage. Body press is a physical attack, even though it uses defense. So yeah, uh, counter probably for that. Unless it's a ghost type like Rune Regis, which is why Rune Regis is so damn good. But yeah, uh, extremely, extremely bulky Pokemon. Can toxic and rest stall through a lot of different things. And has body press now, uh, and, and like Seal Roller and a few other useful moves. I don't think it's an A tier threat, but I do think it's damn near close. Like in the B tier, this is the closest thing to A tier. It's it's super notable uh, for being super bulky. And having a good type to match with that. I mean, ability wise, it's, it's kind of useless. You just don't even want to use light metal ever. Like it, it just makes you weaker to other heavy slams and makes your heavy slams weaker. It's just kind of bad. And clear body is pretty decent. Anyway, with that out of the way, we have Squirk ability, uh, which is that little bird right there. And he's, he's a silly little guy. I don't actually remember what he does, awkwardly enough. Uh, and that's because he doesn't do too much. I mean, he's, he's decent. 92 speed. He's not super fast, but if we look at things, that's fast enough to kind of get some value. And where does that put us at? That puts us like... Uh, where are we? That's not the right button. Squirk ability. You can see him on the first page. He's like number nine or something. He's not the fastest thing out there, but you know, if you give him like a choice scarf or something, he can be faster than a lot of other things. Uh, and more importantly are his abilities. He actually has three good abilities, three usable abilities. Hustle is like a free choice ban with lower accuracy. Very usable with normal flying being decent types to use here. Uh, intimidate just decent i do think that's his weakest of the three abilities because there's a lot of other intimidate users and it just doesn't make him special but it can be a good mix-up because people wouldn't expect that from a squawk ability uh, and then guts is probably going to be your main thing because it effectively gives you a stat immunity because what you do is you do guts and flame orb so you burn yourself get a 1.5 times attack boost uh ignores burn having physical damage and then you just can't get hit with any other status you can't be hit with toxic you can't be hit with uh anything else the problem with that is you'll actually be kind of slow you won't be able to benefit off of this stuff super hard or super well you do have 96 attack and 92 speed which are your main stats you don't really have anything else right 50 of either defense is nothing you're just gonna die uh to most things and there's a lot of electric types that are just faster than you than uh, faster than you running around so i'd be shocked if you can get this guts off and actually do anything with it but if you somehow can live with all that you hit facade, facade, whatever you want to call it. 140 base power, plus guts boost, plus stab, plus ratio, plus uh, 96 attack. I mean, that's just going to hit super damn hard. Uh, we do also have dual wing being brave bird for some crazy good damage there. Uh, we have quick attack if you need priority. That's kind of usable. U-turn to pivot out, which is actually pretty useful because someone will just inevitably swap in something faster than Squawk Ability to go deal with it. And having U-turn can help with that. Uh, Tailwind is super useful. It can set up Tailwind on itself for four turns and just be super fast. You could literally turn one, swap in when they're going to hit your electric type with a ground type or whatever. Uh, and all right, so we'll send this in on Rune Regus, right? They use Earthquake on your uh, Heliolisk or whatever. You send in Rune Regus, you have a flying type that's immune to it. It gets its flame more of Guts boost right away. And then you can Tailwind yourself and hit Facade or Facade like a million times until you win. Uh, also, if you turn to swap out, if you think they're going to swap in something annoying, quick turn to hit really quick. Uh, foul play, I wouldn't even really use because your attacks going to be super high, even with Hustle or Guts, because you need to use Hustle if you want to use a uh, Choice Scarf. Uh, and then... You know, you got Dual Wing Beat and Brave Bird for some decent damage otherwise. I mean, this is a pretty one-dimensional Pokemon. Just uses Guts or Hustle uh, with normal flying stab moves and tries to hit things pretty hard. That's okay. That's a decent uh, niche. The problem is that it's kind of slow. Uh, like, it is fast, but it's... Compared to a lot of things on this tier, it's a little too slow to get a lot of value. I do think still that's a decent niche, though, and I think I could see this thing killing maybe two Pokemon in a battle if you have it uh, come at the right times and do the right things. I think it's a solid, probably, C-tier threat because of that. 
Uh, next up, we have Delphox, uh, fan favorite Pokemon, and also our only real fire type user, which is notable because if we look toward the top, Arbavela right there, uh, and also Registeel to some degree, and Executor. Like, those are mons that aren't answered too easily. I mean, Executor actually is by bug types, but the other two you mainly really answer with fighting. Um, but if they have answers to fighting, which they probably will, you kind of need to. Uh, fire is just a good type here. Uh, even like the things toward the top, I guess the Mimikyu and Cyclozar are bad. Uh, no, not Mimikyu, just Cyclozar is like a bad example because he resists it. But for most things, fire typing is going to be good. It's going to hit hard. You have a 114 special attack, which is great. That hits a lot of things super, super well. You can hit some really fat flamethrowers. You can hit some, uh, some really beautiful dicing gleams. You know, some expanding forces. Uh, things like that just hit super damn hard uh, with your with your special moves, and you got Scorching Sands and Signal Beam and Shadow Ball, like a lot of a lot of good coverage options and stuff. Uh, 140, sorry, not 140, 104 speed is very solid. It's not the best in the tier, but with a Choice Scarf, you might actually outspeed everything that isn't Cyclozar and Talonflame. I think actually those two still will outspeed most things. Maybe I'm wrong with that, and that would change things up. Uh, but this outspeeds most things, like naturally, without having a scarf or anything. You do have your two abilities in Blaze and Magician. Uh, Magician is kind of pointless, though. I guess you just go with Blaze and get a boost if you manage to survive a hit. Uh, which isn't too unlikely, because this thing's got decent bulk as well. 100 special defense and 75 HP with a lot of special attackers. I mean, there's actually a lot of physical attackers in this meta, especially toward the top. But there's a few special attackers in there, and you can abuse them, swap in, get a blaze boost, be really fast, hit him with a flamethrower, dazzling gleam, expanding force, uh, and, and just kind of do that. Uh, you are also resisting fighting, which is nice. You still are neutral to bug, which isn't so great. And uh, weak to ground, which is definitely not great because people are going to be using a lot of ground types to hit these electric types flying around. But overall, just a fast, solid, heavy hitter uh, with a very unique typing for this meta. There's really nothing else like it. And uh, that's that's pretty good. Those are some pretty good traits. Solid B tier threat, I believe. Uh, next up, we have our boy Spite Ups here. And uh, I'll I'll just be real honest with you, uh, real early on, this thing is just F tier. Everything it wants to do is done better by something else. There's really not a lot to discuss here. Uh, I can go show it off to you, I guess, and and discuss really in depth why this thing sucks. Uh, we look at spite ups here: 35 speed, no speed. Right? Uh, 90 defense, 86 special defense. That's not really a defense. 60 HP, awful. Uh, attack wise, what do we get? We get 70 attack and 50 special attacks. So we get no attack. Uh, stat wise, stake out even doubled uh, 79 attack is really not that much at the end of the day. And that would require someone to swap out against spite ops, which why would they do that? Because it's spite ops, it can die to anything. Uh, insomnia, kind of also useless at the end of the day. Uh, you probably want to focus Sash this, even though it is a bug type, and I mentioned that being decent for Illumis. On this thing, it's way less useful because it doesn't get Prankster to make up for that. Right, you get first impression, and then you get every like setup move in existence. We get Sticky Web, Spikes, Toxic Spikes, right, like, I guess Sucker Punch and U-Turn and stuff. But you're mainly going to be setting up uh, Sticky Web and then maybe Toxic Spikes if they let you with this thing. It literally just does set up and then dies. Like, that's what Spite Ups is designed to do. And um, having Sticky Web is normally a really big trait, but there's actually just a strictly better Sticky Web user already in the tier. So this thing kind of serves no purpose. Spikes are not very useful, uh, and, and particularly not useful here. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting two Spite Ops in F tier because I can just do that. I'm allowed to. All right, I'm, I'm a grown man. I can do these things. All right, then we have Indeedy. Uh, Indeedy, very notable for being one of our other terrain setters. There's three. We have Arbeliva, we have Pinchurchin, and we have Indeedy. We don't use Inner Focus, we don't use Synergize, we use Psychic Surge. Sets Psychic Terrain for like five turns or whatever. And uh, then we use Expanding Force, which when you're on Psychic Terrain, has 1.5 times the power, which is like, what, 120 power? 120 base power, Psychic Stab Move. We have that uh, Psychic Normal typing that Weirder had, which as I mentioned, defensively, not completely awful. It's kind of mediocre for this meta, but it's not completely awful. Our main stats are Special Attack, super high, decent HP and Special Defense combo, no defense to speak of. This thing dies to physical attacks, and there's a... A lot of physical attackers that are going to eat well this meta. Uh, 
but yeah, speed wise, it's okay ish. It's not super fast. It's notably one speed stat slower than Mimikyu, which is a real problem for him. Uh, not for Mimikyu, but for Ndidi. Which, uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, you just Psychic Surge and Expanding Force. That's all this thing does. I guess it gets Stab Fake out as well, so you might as well use that. And uh, beyond that, I, I really don't know what else you do. You can maybe trick something with a choice item or something, but I think you're better off just hitting Expanding Force most turns with this thing. Uh, I guess you could maybe Calm Mind, Stored Power or something, but I really don't know what this thing does other than just set up Psychic Terrain and hit Expanding Force. Like, that's 99% of your game plan. And with this special attack stat and speed, it's a pretty good game plan. It has pretty good value, and it's something you actually have to fear. You can maybe give it a Focus Sash, but it is bulky enough, specially, to actually take a hit or two. So you can maybe even do something a bit more risky than what you can do with Pinchurchin. Uh, and I do think if you can find this, and more importantly, I'm putting this in A tier, but I want everyone to know, this thing is an A tier, uh, mainly because it's at Psychic Terrain, and if you can find a team that benefits super hard from Psychic Terrain while being really good themselves, then this thing's really good. If you're just using it on its own, it's really bad, but if you can build their team around Indeedy, I do think it's an A tier threat, and it's a very solid threat. I don't think it, it's like guaranteed to be on the best team or anything like that. I do think Mimikyu, Arborvilla, Rinrigus, Cyclozar are very, very solid threats that you could really run on most teams. I think Indeedy has to be a lot more crafted for, but if you craft for this thing, it's a much better terrain setter than Pinchurchin, uh, and can get some real nice value out of its speed and special attack and just hit things super hard with expanding force 99% of the time. Like, nothing really likes taking 120 base stab based power off 105 special attack that's a lot that's a lot of damage so yeah uh very a very solid threat right there uh next up we have scyther scyther uh pretty notable or not really its swarm ability not really its steadfast ability nothing is really flinching in this meta but technician is its main ability it generally uses and because it's not fully evolved we can eviolate it if we want to that's if we want to, though. We don't really have to do that, but if we do that, this thing actually has monstrous stats across the board with an Eviolite. Right, we got 105 speed. I think that's like the third highest in the tier or something. That's really fucking fast. Um, Yeah, what? Fifth highest in the tier. Right, by default, fifth highest in the tier. Very, very fast. Bug flying, normally a really big problem because it means your quad weak to rock, which is normally a common type, but this meta doesn't really have any rock type attackers or even attacks. There's not really a lot of mons with rock type coverage that they want to use. They can use it, and they might use it because of Scyther, but it's because of Scyther. This thing is a big threat without that going around. Uh, it's got 105 speed, it's got 110 attack, which is amazing. It has no special attack, but it's a nice, strong, fast physical attacker. With 70, 80, and 80 on this defenses, that's already decent defenses, ignoring this generally awful typing, but solid typing in this meta, uh, outside of the electric type moves you're going to be taking. But uh, generally already solid, and then you hit Eviolite, which gives you 1.5 times in both your defenses, and all of a sudden, this thing is 120 defense, 120 special defense, 70 HP, extremely bulky, extremely threatening, with high attack and technician, uh, and just a solid predator of moves. We got acrobatics if you want to try that. I don't think that's really where you want to go. I think what you want to use is probably close combat, because we mentioned those fighting type moves are great. We can hit for uh, Facade Facade if we need that to cover for Burn, which I do think will will be valuable if you can find Pokemon to use it in this meta. Uh, then, uh, most importantly, in your strongest move, Dual Wing Beat. It's your Flying Type Stab. Hits uh, for 80 damage and hits twice, most importantly, meaning this is one of the best answers for Cyclozar and Mimikyu with the ludicrous amount of substitutes they're going to be putting up and Mimikyu's disguise ability gets procced by Dual Wing Beat and then you hit again. Very good stuff there. Gets a knockoff, which is super useful. Lunges, solid stab. It gets Pursuit. It's the best Pursuit user in the tier by far because it has a lot of threats outside of Pursuit. Bayonet and Raticate just kind of click Pursuit, and that's like their whole gimmick. This thing just casually has it. It's got Pursuit. It's got Quick Attack. It's got Dual Envy. It's got Facade. It's got Close Combat. We got Sword Stance if you want to go crazy with it. We got U-Turn, which is great. It is Stab. On this Pokemon, it's Stab. Off of like 110 attack, that's going to hit super damn hard. If you want to risk it, though, instead of Eviolite, you could easily Choice Band or Choice Scarf and just 
assume that your high attack and bug type and flying type stab will be enough because a lot of times they i'll just be real they will be they'll be enough your main weakness is going to be a stealth rocks so you want to be very careful when using this thing to not let those get on the field for free uh because otherwise it loses like half of its health every time it comes in but outside of stealth rocks there's not really any rock types around the only fire type is delphox who i believe you outspeed by one stat point so you're either going to be facing a scarfed uh delphox which is pretty reasonable but then you can be Scarf yourself and just outspeed it and hit it super hard with like Dual Wing Beater, Close Combat, or Forsade or something and just be good at the end of the day. Like this thing this thing has a lot of different utility, a lot of different options, and ludicrously high stats. Even without Eviolite, this thing's got good stats. With Eviolite, this thing's a monster. And its usual weaknesses that it has with that bug flying typing are near non-existent in the tier. I definitely think this thing's going to be a top tier threat. However... I don't think it's going to be in that S tier. I think this is going to be one of those solid A tier contenders, which we seem to have a little bit too many of. I might have to move Ndidi down. I, I do think Ndidi's kind of an imposter up in that A tier. It's only narrowly in there for me right now. Uh, then we have Fira. Yeah. Uh, Fira, I guess, has 100 speed, but that's actually not really that much in this meta, and it has 90 attack, which is really not that much in this meta. That's Mimikyu's base attack before a sword stance, and then it has no defenses and uh, a bad typing outright. I mean, it's neutral to fighting. Uh, I think it resists bug, maybe. It is also weak to electric, and uh, it doesn't really get any benefits or crazy stats or anything to make up for that. It has no abilities to really make up for that. It's just kind of pointless. I mean, you guys, you can drill, peck, and drill run, but that's you still lose. Like, you get Pursue and Quick Attack as well, but we just discussed why Scyther is the best one of that. You also get U-Turn, but Scyther's better at that. You get Tailwind, but uh, it was the other one. Someone else is better at that. <laughs> I, like, Tailwind is, I guess, the main thing here, but it's really not that great. You got, like, Steel Wing and Quick Attack and Proceed for some, like, minor coverage, and I think a, a Sucker Punch or whatever. No, you don't get a Sucker Punch. Yeah, I mean, this thing is just kind of not enough in pretty much every category. To the point where, even though it's not awful, like, I think generally it's probably, like, a like a C or D tier mon in terms of, like, somewhat viability. The problem is there's just better mons to use that do the same thing better. Uh, so it's just F tier. I can't think of a reason to use this thing. Uh, then we have my cargo. My cargo is a little interesting fella. Uh, there he is. My cargo stat line is decent. Right? 120 defense, 80 special, 60 HP. Decent bulk. It's actually a special attacker. There seem to be a lot of physical attackers in here and a good amount of intimidate going around. So being a special attacker is a pretty valuable trait. Uh, speed wise, though, pretty slow. Ability wise, uh, and useless. Like, your main thing is just flame body, where physical mons have a 30% chance of being burned, which is pretty decent. But you could also go with weak armor and raise your speed by two and lower your defense. And then the most important move that makes this thing even somewhat usable is cell smash, which you go with like a white herb for, but you might not even want a white herb to be honest. I think you just cell smash, uh, and, and then I don't know. I actually don't know what you do beyond that, like, focus sash. Because the problem with this thing is fire rock typing, which is weak to fighting. And uh, it is also quad weak to ground, which is a semi-common typing here because of all the electric type uh, viability. And just the general viability. There's, like, not many flying types or anything, and a lot of things weak to it. So ground is a decent type for the usual, and there's a lot of users of it, including Meg Cargo. But yeah, you just cell smash with this thing, uh, and then, you know, bulk up your special defense stat and use like earth power and uh, flamethrower and whatever other moves you want to use alongside that maybe like a stealth rock or something because you might not live most of the time but yeah this thing just lives and dies by the shell smash that's its whole gimmick it's a solidish gimmick it's bulky enough to kind of try and pull it off the problem is even with a shell smash its speed isn't going to be enough so you need that like weak armor or whatever to trigger and even then even like quad boosted speed on the cargo might still be too slow because it's 30. I think Cyclozar actually outspeeds it with four, uh, with the Shell Smash and Weak Armor proc. I think Cyclozar and uh, the thing faster than Cyclozar both outspeed my cargo, which is a bit of a problem. And other things that are like trying to outspeed Cyclozar will also outspeed you. And anything that doesn't outspeed you, you're not going to hit that that hard. Right? Uh, you know, Rock and Fire Stab isn't super amazing for most mods in this tier. Uh, then we have Wall Rain. 
Wall rain is interesting. In most other metas, you'd be solid. Water types, normally pretty good. Ice typing, normally pretty shit. Uh, in this meta, it's pretty shit. Right, there's a lot of electric types going around. The other things are grass types like Arboliva, or just fairy ghost types like Mimikyu, who don't really care about ice or water, along with Ndidi, who doesn't really care about ice and water. Right, ice and water doesn't help it here. There's no, like, fire types. There's no, like, rock types. There's, like, nothing that what ice and water normally help with at all really here other than cyclozar who will just swap out and shed tail so kind of pointless uh this thing's got a lot of bulk uh which is nice like 110 hp 90 90 is good it has more special attack than attacks you use that stat and then it has kind of useless speed uh oblivious is definitely its best ability there's not gonna be any snow so ice body is useless there's no real fire ice type moves being used so thick that's useless and even if thick that was useful ice and water already kind of gives you resistances to those two or at least neutrality in the case of fire typing so oblivious is always kind of your best play immunity to uh taunt and intimidate is nice uh and then i guess you just hit back with like i don't know blizzard and, and scald or whatever this thing should get scald because it's older no, it doesn't even get scald. You go with, like, Surf. <laughs> Blizzard and Surf. Yeah, that's nothing. All right, this thing's got pretty shit typing for this meta. Uh, the stats aren't amazing, and the moves aren't amazing. The ability's solid, but everything else is kind of bad, so it just doesn't really do much. Uh, and on the whole, I'm just going to put this thing probably down in D tier. I think it'll probably still have AU somewhere, but you're really going to have to fight to make it usable. Uh, speaking of fight to make it usable, we have Crabominable, everyone's favorite crab, except nobody's favorite crab. Anyway, Crabominable, ludicrously high, 132 attack, easily the highest attack stat out of anything in this entire meta. Notable fighting typing, being a very, very good typing for this. It also gets Iron Fist, which is super useful, uh, and that's nuts. Uh, Anger Point can be a fun gimmick strat. Uh, and, and that's really it. I, I can, I guess, hyper cutter for the Intimidate users, but you don't even care about getting Intimidate. Just your attack is that high, and Iron Fist with a power boost can kind of outset that. Uh, but yeah, you get, like, Iron Fist. You can hit him with, like, a Brick Break. Uh, you don't really want Body Press with your low defenses. Uh, and that's kind of the problem with this Pokemon, your low defenses. You have, like, a few different things. We got, like, your Ice Punch, your Ice Hammer. Right, things that can get boosted by Iron Fist. It's got a few of Thunder Punch, right? Uh, and it hits super hard. If this thing hits you, you probably die in one hit, like with no investments. And especially if it's like Choice Bandit or something, it's going to hit super hard. The problem is, though, this thing's got 40 speed, 60 defense, 70 defense. And Fighting Ice is weak to a lot of things, including Fighting, including uh, Psychic. Uh, and it also is resisted, like like immune to the Fighting type attacks, like Mimikyu is, or Rune Grigas can be. The Ice typing also doesn't hit anything other than Cyclozar and like Scyther super effectively. Uh, and those two are fast enough that they can just swap out into something that can take the hit, despite the, the massive attack stat. But yeah, generally abominable, just super slow and pretty frail, especially from its typing. Uh, and you can just kind of kill it for free. Uh, and that's the problem with it. It's got a good attack stat, and uh, it's got an ability that can make it even higher. But it just won't live or act fast enough to do anything with it. So it's, it's just kind of D tier. If you can find a way to hit something with Crabominable, it's going to die. But uh, that's a big F. That really, really is a big F. Especially with substitutes going around uh, with Cyclozar. It's it's really going to be rough to use this thing. But I think if you force it, you can maybe kill one or two Pokemon with this thing. And uh, call that a big success. Anyway, our next Mon is Toxic Rook. And uh, Toxic Rook has stats certainly has stats it's got a decent uh attacking stat of 106 it's got moderate moderately not awful defenses they're not great but they're not completely unusable in 83 65 65 and 85 speed is kind of useless uh i'll be honest this thing has poison touch can be your main ability or anticipation if you don't want to accidentally poison something which is kind of useless to do i'll be honest you want it to toxic something not poison something uh, you, you can use whatever item you want with this thing. It gets Sucker Punch, like everyone knows that. That's that's like the main gimmick for Toxic Croak is another Sucker Punch user. Shocking. But it's Fighting and Poison Stab, which hits everything in this tier. It, like, unironically, everything other than like a DD is we uh, and Scyther are weak to Poison or Fighting or like get hit pretty hard by it. Or Slurber, I guess. There's But a lot of things near the top, right? Mimikyu gets hit bad by Poison. Cyclozar doesn't like Fighting. Arbuliva doesn't like Fighting. Retroceal doesn't like Fighting. Delphox, not Delphox, uh, Helios doesn't like Fighting. Uh, Exeggior doesn't like Poison, right? There's like a, there's a decent stab to have. 
the stats though pretty middle of the road as far as things go and not really in a good way they just don't really do a lot but they also don't do nothing uh, on the whole though this thing mainly just hits sucker punch off 106 attack uh, but no stab which just isn't super great it's not awful it's not unusable but it doesn't do a lot i'm probably gonna throw it down in d tier it just it really it's like the higher ish end of d tier but it really just doesn't accomplish a lot with their stats they're, they're too middling to really do much uh then we have my boy belly bolt probably my favorite mod in this meta i don't think he's the best in this meta by any means but he is pretty solid he's my favorite mod in this meta just like design wise and he's so goofy i, I like mimic you like a lot more generally but for this meta specifically i think belly bolt's really funny uh, yeah. Belly Bolt, absurdly bulky, 90 defense, 83 special defense, 109 HP, electric typing having the only weakness of ground. He's insane with all of this. It, it has just really good stuff. Uh, electric, I think, also resists electric, which is good when there's a lot of electric types. But yeah, this thing tanks hits and then uses electromorphosis. You don't use static or damp. Those are just useless. Ele electromorphosis, uh, your electric moves get charged whenever you take a hit from anything, and you're going to take hits because you're slow as hell. You are slow, absurdly bulky, and absurdly high special attack of 103 with electric moves that can get further boosted by electric terrain. Uh, my choices for this mon, I think, was like a Volt Switch, Thunderbolts, and Sucker Punch was useful <laughs> for priority, and then uh, not Chilling Water, but actually the move way down here which for some reason was very rarely used, called Muddy Water, which is a higher damage water move. I don't know why you'd use Chilling Water when you can use Muddy Water. I guess maybe this thing's used in doubles, and then this lowers both the attacks by one. Uh, but hitting harder with Electromorphosis is way more important, and there's a few things that get hit by water here, which is kind of useful, like Rune Regis mainly. Like, things that resist your electric, like Rune Regis and Trap Inch, do not like your water. Um, so you can just hit Muddy Water. Yeah, Muddy Water, uh, Thunderbolt are kind of the core of this Pokemon. Everything beyond that, you can kind of figure it out on your own. Uh, you can give this thing slack off to heal instead of Sucker Punch, which is kind of funny. If things can't hit this thing hard enough, which a lot of things can't, because, I mean, look at the stats on this fucker, and you can just up its defenses even higher. It's not its defense. You can up its defenses even higher, because it doesn't really have a need to outspeed anything. But you can just really invest into that. You get this thing like leftovers. And it just sits there. It takes hits. It spams Thunderbolt and Muddy Water and does ludicrous amounts of damage while taking a lot of hits. I don't think it's like super disgusting, but it's kind of really hard to answer. And it hits a lot of things on its way out while taking a lot of hits because it's got an amazing defensive typing of solo electric. Uh, I think it's a solid B tier threat. I don't think it's A or S tier. You're going to be seeing this on all of my June teams. I fucking love Belly Bolt. But that's just me, right? I don't, I don't actually think he's that, that great of a Pokemon. I think he's very solid, though, and something you should be a little bit aware of. But not as dominant as things like Mimikyu and Arbolovera. Because he could kind of just die to random things over time. Uh, and can be pivoted around if you play correctly. But yeah. Uh, then we have Rotom Wash. I really thought this thing would be a lot better than it was, but I guess that's just power creep for you. But if we look at the stats, 107 defense, 100 special, uh, 107 special defense... Pretty solid defenses, but off of 50 HP, they become a lot less solid. 107, 105 special attack, actually really, really good. And you notice that electric typing, this is like our fourth electric type or whatever, and we have electric terrain of Inturchin going around. But yeah, this thing just hits fat hydro pumps, uh, fat volt switches, and uh, big thunderbolts. And that's like 90% of what it does. I think a lot of these things are going to be choice spec, as they almost always have been as far as time goes uh it makes its 105 special attack like what like 140 or something like really really high like that it has levitate so it's immune to those ground type moves which makes its electric typing uh just great like you just get like a free electric like a resist so you're, you're neutral to electric i think i might be wrong with that actually i keep just saying that like i'm like trusting it i don't actually think that's right by the way levitate's one of the best abilities ever made because it gives you free immunity to a very common type and in this meta i think ground types gonna be pretty common so that immunity is great your speed stat's not super great your bulk is not super amazing but your special attack is really good and electric and water are very solid ish defenses typings and definitely very solid attacking typings i mean volt switch thunderbolt hydro pump give you so much coverage that choice specs is kind of a must for that and i think you get 
some other move somewhere. You get will o -Wisp, which is actually super useful. Might not be worth running choice specs just because this is one of very few will o -Wisp users. And if you look near the top of this, at least my predictions are, most things will be physical attackers, right? Uh, Cyclozar, Mimikyu, Runrigus, Scyther, uh, Registeel, and Slowbro probably, Weird Deer, Squawkabilly. They're all going to be, well, I guess not Squawkabilly. Don't want to burn that thing. But a lot of things will uh, near the top will lose to will -Wisp, and a lot of the more gimmicky mons are all physical attackers as well. So your will can be very, very high value, but you have to sack choice specs to do that, which just isn't super great. Uh, so overall, I, I feel like this mon is just at the wrong speed tier, but it has decent-ish bulk. It has levitate, uh, electric water solid typing, and its special attack is very, very good. And on the whole, I, I feel like it's okay. It's probably a nice C tier threat where I could kind of see this being used on teams, but I don't think it in itself is super, super threatening or needs specific attention to get rid of it. I think you can hit this thing with most physical or special attackers and kind of just take it out over time. Uh, I think things in, in S and A tier you should definitely build your team around. You have to be very aware of, but B tier, maybe like consider them a little bit. C tier... You don't really have to consider them when you're building your team. You will beat them naturally, but they can be very uh, effective on teams. And then DNF, you know, not, not super great. Uh, anyway, with that being said, we're off to Avalug. Uh, and Avalug's an interesting Pokemon. Just from these stats alone, you think maybe this thing's kind of a little disgusting. I mean, we got 184 uh, defense, 117 attack, 95 HP. Those are big stats. Here's the problem though, it's this thing right here, 46 special defense, and uh, half the tier special attackers, and the kind of scary fast parts of the tier special attackers, and the stalling parts of the tier special attackers, Arbeliva, Indidi, uh, Pinchurchin, Heliolist, Alolan Raichu we haven't talked about, he's a special attacker, Delphox, Bellabolt, right, those are pretty decent threats, all special attackers, and uh, if you send out one of them into this thing, it dies. It doesn't have to even be super effective, but the solo ice typing means a lot of things will be. Uh, just body press this thing, hit it with a flamethrower, hit it with whatever, it'll probably die to anything uh, special. Physically though, it kind of tanks a lot of things, and then you hit back with avalanche. And avalanche power doubles if the user is damaged by the target, it's stab, so it's 120 base power, stab off of 117 attack, pretty fucking good. Pretty good move. Uh, problem is ice types don't hit super hard in a lot of things here. They're pretty much neutral across the board. Uh, you do have Earthquake as well to hit those electric types if they're being annoying. You do have Gyro Bull because you're kind of heavy as well. Uh, and I guess Heavy Slam as well. Like I don't know what the difference between these two is. I'm assuming Gyro Bull is probably better though because it has less PP. Uh, we have Facade if you think you're going to get burnt for some reason. You do have Aurora Veil if you somehow get snow up, I guess, but that, you're not going to be doing that. You're just going to die to a, a special attack. This is one of like two or three rapid spinners though. That's a super notable move to have. Uh, you do have Roar, I suppose, but you're mainly 99% of the time of this thing just hit Avalanche and, and kind of hit for solid damage back while taking hits. Uh, and that's about all this thing does. That's the main problem with it is that it's weak to special attacks and it has like no moves other than a rapid spin and avalanche. Like unironically, I guess it's body press, which off of this defense stat of 184, that's a big hard body press right there. If you don't have a special attacker to kill this thing in one hit. So yeah, uh, basically a mon that if you can't answer it, the turn it gets sent out will hit you super hard with a uh, body press, earthquake, avalanche, something like that. Uh, and it just, it just hits hard and, and kills a lot, but also dies in one hit if you send out the right thing to it. Kind of like a quick check. It's like, all right, yeah, mic check, what do you got going on here? Uh, but yeah, it also has problems against subs uh, subs in general. It doesn't have like a multi-hit or move or anything like that, but I think it's a solid C tier threat, actually, shockingly. Because it can, there's a, like I said, near the top, a lot of physical attackers. It tanks all of those healthily, happily. If they don't have a random, you know, if they're not a mix attacker like Slowbro or, uh, you know, Registeel or whatever, uh, or who was the other? There was like a few mix attackers, like a shocking amount of them. Weird Deer. There's a lot of mix attackers in this meta. If they're not one of those or one of the few special attackers we got going on, this thing can tank them and hit back super hard with like body press and stuff as long as you don't send out Mimikyu or Rune Regis to answer that body press. But even sending out Mimikyu or Rune Regis, they're not special attackers, so they don't really do too much to Avalog. Uh, unless Mimikyu is like four sword stance up. Even like a one or two sword stance Mimikyu, this thing will just slowly break through disguise. The problem is if you have Psychozar out and you hit Shedtail 
and then this thing's fighting a substitute or like an Arbovela or something, it just dies, right? An Arbovela, I think, is going to be pretty common. A DD is pretty common, right? Things like that, I, I think you'll see around a good amount, and you'll see enough of special attackers to kind of keep Avalug at bay in C tier. But if, if it's not there, you get fucked. Uh, then we have Raichu Alola back again from last month, and uh, you'll notice he is still the third fastest thing in this meta. He was the third fastest in the previous meta before a certain Pokemon got banned, and then he became the second fastest, which might happen again, actually. But at the moment, he's the third fastest, which is a great place to be. Uh, he's got a very nice 95 special attack. 85 special defense, 60 HP, means he can live a few different special attacks. He also has 85 attack, which is pretty notable and very usable. And Surge Surfer, which was useless last meta, but this meta, if Electric Surfer is active, Pokemon speed is double. We got Pinchurchin. If you run Pinchurchin come with this thing, it effectively has, what, like 220, yeah, 220 speed. Nothing that speeds this thing, uh, Surge Surfer. Uh, generally, 9 times out of 10, you hit like a Volt Switch on this thing to be able to switch out. I normally like putting Signal Beam on it to hit other Raichu Alolas for super effective damage, which is super, super nice. Uh, this thing should get Rising Voltage, I believe. And maybe even, yeah, it gets Expanding Force and Rising Voltage. It can benefit from Ndidi and Perturgeon being on the field. It has Extreme Speed for one of the highest levels of priority in the entire game. And I'll have a decent-ish attack stat. Uh, so I actually like using that as a tech move. It's not a super great one. But yeah, generally in this meta, you hit Expanding Force. You hit, uh, if it doesn't have Rise, I guess it doesn't have Rising Voltage, really. Or is it down here? Uh, let's see. Does it have Rising Voltage? Yeah, okay, it has Rising Voltage. You hit Rising Voltage, you hit, uh, which what was the other one? Expanding Force. You literally benefit from both terrains and hit super hard with both of your stabs. Both of your stabs have terrain and you're fast. And you're somewhat bulky to special attacks. It gets, this thing hits hard. And it's really, really hard to stop it. Because whenever you're about to go have an answer to it, it'll just be the fastest thing in the tier. The third fastest thing in the tier. And the two things faster than this thing can't really kill it in one hit. So you can just hit Volt Switch and get out for free. You give this thing, like, heavy duty boots. You give this thing, uh, you don't, normally you give it a choice scarf. But because it has Surge Surfer, you don't really need that. So you can probably just choice spec this thing. Uh, choice specs, right? Just have it hit super hard. It's got a lot of versatility. There's a lot of different moves it could be using, but it definitely is going to benefit most from Volt Switch, Expanding Force, and Rising Voltage. You might not even need both. You can just go with whatever one you can set yourself, or you expect to see more of. But uh, yeah, this thing is definitely similar to last month. Definitely an S tier threat. It benefits from both terrains. It's super fast. It hits pretty hard without the terrains, with the terrains, with stab. It hits even harder. You gotta be super careful around Raichu. The only thing really keeping this thing in check are the large amount of Sucker Punch users. Uh, Mimikyu on its own with Shadow Sneak actually pretty much solos Alolan Raichu. But without that, if you can get Mimikyu out of the way, which is something you want to do in general because it's a solid... I, I might even move Mimikyu up to S tier or whatever. Mimikyu is a solid threat in and of itself. Uh, but with Mimikyu not around, Raichu Alola just terrorizes the tier with both different terrains. And that's just a big thing. That's something you have to be super, super worried about and it's super, super powerful. Uh, next up, we have Surfetched. Surfetched, very interesting Pokemon. Pretty slow, right? 65 speed. Uh, beyond that, though, very high attack. 135 attack, I think, is the highest in the entire tier. I have to double check, but I do think that's actually even higher than Crabominable, which is crazy. Uh, notable thing with Surfetch, his typing isn't awful. He's raw fighting, which means he's weak to flying and he's weak to psychic. Uh, there's, like I said, pretty much no flying types other than Scyther. You can just avoid pretty actively. And uh, on the psychic side, that's where you have to be concerned. That's where you got Raichu Lola and DD, Weird Ear, uh, Slowbro, things like that, Delphox. There's a lot of psychic types going around. But if you can uh, ignore those two things, fighting typing hits everything else super hard in this meta. Like I keep mentioning... Fighting hits everything well here, right? We can hit close combat. We get first impression for priority on that first turn in. We can hit dual wing beat specifically to deal with Mimikyu and his 50 substitutes, uh, which is just super nice. We got knockoff, which is great tech. Poison jab, which is great tech. Quick attack if you want it for some reason, just to have some more priority after the first impression. Uh, substitute of your own if you don't want to get hit with status, which is pretty nice. Facade, facade, whatever you want to call it. 
because you are going to get burned on this thing with flame body or will o wisp or something like that they're going to try to burn you you never use steadfast you use scrappy you use scrappy to hit rune regus and mimic you with whatever you want to do very very simple stuff you can use whatever you want here as an item quite a lot of options leftovers isn't an awful one rocky helmet's not a bad one either uh, a lot of things are physical attackers in here after all and they do not like getting hit super hard like that you can even try an expert build because there's going to be a lot of fighting types with 135 uh base attack already you probably don't need that you can even just do a basic assault vest because you're going to be using a lot of attacking moves mainly because that is your main stat clearly you have enough bulk to take one hit and then you hit back super hard with an attack and just kind of kill whatever the hell hit you the first place in one hit that's the whole point of surf fetch and it does that pretty well i feel i don't think it's like a very very solid pokemon i think it's like an a tier threat but i do think it's pretty solid i think it's like belly bolt tier and you know, nice b tier uh where it it can really fuck you up if you're not ready for it uh but you'll probably be ready for it and have something that can kill it the second turn after it kills something like it, generally surfetch will kill one thing and then be low enough and slow enough to just die to whatever comes out next but it will kill one thing pretty consistently and that's a solid b tier placement uh, next up, though, we have Talonflame, which is the fastest thing in this tier. It's just number one. Fastest overall. By a good amount. Uh, you always use Flame Body. Yellow Wings is bad. It's specifically if this Pokemon HP is full, Flying type moves have priority, which is pointless. Uh, that just means the first turn you get priority and then never again, which is pointless. I'd rather have Flame Body with so many physical attackers around. Anything that hits this thing having a 1 in 3 chance of just spontaneously combusting and losing all of its attack as a as a punishment for hitting this thing is really damn good. And then you just hit like, you know, Brave Bird and uh, what's the other one? Flame, not Flame Charge, Flare Blitz. Flare Blitz, Brave Bird are your two stabs. They hit most things in this tier pretty well and uh, that's about all there is to it. You can have Dual Wing Beat for Mimikyu and then you're set. You can do Roost if you want, I guess, but mainly just Flare Bird, uh, Flare Bird. Flare Blitz and Brave Bird hit most things and then you can like U-turn at the end of it. Uh, it has it has other options where right? you can be the fastest thing in the tier and then hit people with toxic uh or something weird like that where you could go for a sword stance or something if cyclosar gives you a free substitute because he can just do that it's bulky enough to maybe take one hit as well with 78 71 69 it's slightly bulky enough where if it's not super effective which most things won't be it can maybe take one hit and then hit even harder but because flare blitz and brave bird have a lot of recoil you probably won't live <laughs> beyond the first turn. You kind of put it going all in on this 81 attack and hoping it's enough to kill. I think most of the time this thing's going to be a choice banded to kind of make up for how poor its uh, its attack is. But yeah, it's the fastest thing in the tier with access to U-turn and, uh, and can hit pretty hard with stab and high power. Uh, but not super hard, I don't think. It just hits kind of hard. It hits, it hits decently hard, but literally just by being the fastest thing in the tier and not being completely unusable... I actually think this thing's an A tier threat, and you have to be constantly considering it uh, on every single team because it's it's just the fastest thing. That's a really really strong thing to be. It's the fastest thing, but I don't think it beats out Cyclozar and Raichu. I don't think anything beats out Cyclozar, honestly. Even Raichu kind of loses to Cyclozar. It's just uber powerful. Uh, anyway, our final mod of the entire thing is Cricketune. Uh, uh, Cricketune. And notable for finally being that thing that is the reason that we have two spite ops in that tier because it just sucks that bad compared to Cricketune, who literally just by nature of having sticky webs in a relatively speed dependent meta is going to go to C tier and not any higher. Uh, Cricketune literally just sets sticky webs and dies, but does it better than spite ops. And that's it. That's that's that is all it does. I think Bug Buzz also goes through subs or something and it's stab and all that, which is kind of neat. But yeah, you literally every single time you just go sticky web. Uh, it's a hazard that lowers speed when stuff switches in. And then this thing has no other real stats or anything. It has mediocre stats across the board in Technician. Uh, I don't think it even does anything with Technician. But I guess what you could do is if you weirdly outspeed something, which you should, you might as well go all in on your speed and then just go give yourself a, uh, a focus sash. Maybe what you can do is focus Sash uh, with the Sticky Web and then hit Endeavor if you're faster for some reason, and it'll bring whatever you're fighting down to 1 HP, which is a pretty funny tech. It has Knockoff as well, uh, useful utility move right there. 
if you don't have anything else to do, Parish Song. If you have a trap pinch and you use Protect or something, that could be really fucking funny. It's a funny gimmick. But no, nine times out of ten, it has Toxic as well. But uh, nine times out of ten, this thing just hits Sticky Web, and it's kind of up to you to figure out what you want to do beyond that. And no matter what you pick, it's not going to be a lot. You, know, you could you could Skitter Smack to lower your special attack or something. Uh, but yeah. Rickatoon's not going to hit super hard, it's not going to live a lot of attacks, it's not going to outspeed a lot of things. It's going to hit Sticky Web and then make the rest of your team outspeed everything. And that's its only real value, but it just does that better than Spite Up. So, uh, it's, like I said, it's C2, that's where it's at. And overall, this is our uh, final tier list right here. Right? Pretty good stuff. Pretty obvious, uh, like, S-tier mons. I don't think anything else other than maybe Mimic you deserves S-tier. I think the A tier is pretty fair, the B tier is pretty fair. Some stuff in C tier I could see going up the B, and uh, beyond that though, I think the stuff toward the bottom probably will be at the bottom. I'd be really shocked if anything that I've ranked here uh, changes by more than one tier when the official like rankings come out at the end of the meta after we've played through it a bunch. Because I do think a lot of this is pretty cut and dry and, and kind of pretty obvious almost. And with that being said, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with all the takes I had here. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.